the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Damaris, also known as Damaris Stash a bit weird. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Wednesday, the 26th of November, 2014, and this is episode 116. Wow. Um, we'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you. To all of our returning viewers, and a big hiya to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Damaris, you have a few shout-outs to give, so why don't you shout to them? Not really shout, but sh shout out to them. Why am I shouting out to them? Because they're cool. And, and they're amazing. But what do they do? Oh, they introduce themselves in the introductions thread. Yes. Okay, so who are they? Amanda, who is Little Panda 518 from Arkansas. Oh my gosh, you know what she did? Yes. Well, do they know what she did? Probably. Well, she posted about it on the board. She watched all 115 episodes in like a week, a little over a week. OMG, crazy. Are you, are you CC and Damaris out? <laughs> <laughs> it was probably really interesting to see the progression from that very first episode up to present. All the changes in hairstyles and all the... Character development. Character development and in improvement in knitting skills and... All that jazz. Okay, continue on with the shout outs. Lucy, who is Lucy Goose, 88, from Birmingham, UK. Mm -hmm. And Shirley, who is Shirley Murley from Arizona. So, hiya. Thanks for introducing yourselves. Um, glad you've joined us. So, Damaris, if somebody's not a member of our Ravelry group, what should they do? They should join it. And then what? You should introduce yourself in our introduction thread and you we'll get a shout out on our next episode. That's right. Okay, well, we have quite a bit of stuff to talk about. My pile over here is pretty big. Um, so I guess we'll get started. Okay, here we go. And now we're going to talk about what we're, what, what's on our needles. <laughs> Damaris, I think you're confused because what's on your needles? Um, uh, Hexapuffs. Not really. You haven't worked on those in Actually, weeks. Actually, I there is one in the middle of it. I stopped it. Okay. To work on gloves. To work on gloves. Okay, so well, tell us about Hexapuffs in case somebody doesn't know. I'm making a beekeeper's quilt by Tanny Onnitz from them. Okay. Yeah. And you took a hiatus, but you're going to jump back into those now because you have so many mini schemes. You got a lot for your birthday, yeah. and people have sent you some and all that jazz. Um, so what is going to be the next big project on your needles? I have no idea. <laughs> I think it should be a pair of socks because don't you have that? Didn't we buy some sock yarn at Online Brighton for you? So. From wasn't it from like Easy Knits? Wasn't it purple and green? Yeah. I think that's what you should cast on. You should do some purple and green socks. When does the next Marvel movie come out? May. You could have them done to wear to the Marvel movie. I could I could do a cheap Bruce Banner cosplay wearing my Bruce Banner purple and green socks. That would be fabulous. Okay. <laughs> so that should go on your needles next. Is there a Bruce Banner inspired sock pattern? No, I looked. Incredible Hulk inspired? No. They're the same person, Mom. Oh, I know, but I was saying the maybe... The same I know they're the same, but maybe there's somebody either did it... I was saying you could search either way as Bruce Banner or Incredible <laughs> Hulk. Somebody might have posted it only one way. What about Marvel sock pattern? I don't think so. Maybe you should search for that. If not, you could just do plain vanilla socks or you could do a ribbed sock pattern or something. I'm so. going to wear a Bruce Banner outfit to when we go see Age of Ultron. Okay, I, I yeah, don't... Yeah, like purple shirt. Like purple what you button, have on right? No, purple button-up shirt. Oh, we'll have to see what you find one. A lab coat and glasses. You have glasses. I know. These are good glasses for Bruce Banner. <laughs> Is that why you picked those glasses frames? What are what? you talking I don't, I don't about? All right, do you have anything else you want to say about what's not on your needles but is <laughs> needle adjacent? So I guess it's, it's, it's adjacent to my needles. Now we're going to talk about what's adjacent to our needles. Yes, well that's a thing. Other podcasters talk about needle adjacent projects. Oh. I guess we need to then wind your, your, your purple and green yarn <laughs> so that you can actually knit it, huh? Yeah, I do have a hex puff. It's on the needles, though. I, it's just in the middle of it, but I haven't worked on it in a while. A while, so. A while. Yeah. 
So, okay, well, that's exciting. Um, so now I guess I'll talk about what's on my needles. I should stop. Oops, I'm about to drop a stitch. Don't do that. Hold that thought, hold that thought, hold that thought. We'll sing you a song while I fix the stitch. Fixing, fixing, done. Okay, what am I going to talk about first? Um, you took away my armrest. I'm so sorry. Super secret project in this bag right here. It doesn't match the theme, though, because it's an Outlander-inspired project. And I don't you have don't any... Need a Outlander bag. You don't need a bag for every single type of project. No, I don't, but you know, I've seen some amazing tartan project bags out there right now. But anyway, I would want a pink tartan, which is not Outlander. But I would I have looked and there are pink tartans and they're fabulous. Anyway, in my in my lovely Doctor Who bag here, I have an Outlander inspired sock design that I'm doing in collaboration with Julia from Pandia's Jewels. Um, and we're hoping to put out that kit sometime in early 2015, maybe like February, before the show comes back in April. So that's on my needles. I'm working on that. Then I'm working on, oh, I've got to get it out of here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, if you are part, oops, if you are part of our knitting group that will be at, and you'll be at the Christmas party, you need to go away for a couple of minutes while I talk about this. I am so twisted yarn everywhere. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, are you gone? I hope so. Okay. I am doing the mini sweater ornament with cables by Emily5446. And so at our at our Christmas party for our knitting group, which is in like a week and a half, um, we do we do a yarn exchange like where you bring a skein of yarn that out of your stash that you don't want anymore or like I'm gonna bring the full leftover skein from my sweater that I finished my natty swim sweater um, and we do an exchange where you put it in and then everybody gets a number and then you get to pick a skein of yarn but we also do an ornament exchange where you make an ornament and then they're numbered and then something anyway we make an ornament so I am making that ornament out of the leftover West Yorkshire spinners Signature four ply in the owl colorway, and I'm doing it on US one and a half 2.5 mil needles, and here it is. Yes, I know there's tons of strings hanging off it. So it's got just a, <clears throat> it's got just a little a little cable right there down the middle on the front and the back. And the sleeves are on waist yarn right now. That's a lot of these ends right here is the sleeves. So I only have about, <laughs> hush, quit laughing at me. I only have about four more rows or so and then the ribbing and I'm debating keeping the sleeve short sleeve or not. I mean I would have to put them back on the needles and bind off but and I'm hoping that I can transform a paper clip into a hanger because that would be adorable otherwise I'll do like I guess an I cord or something and attach it somehow. So I just cast this on yesterday but I thought it was cute. Okay, so I'm doing that. Okay, if you're in our knitting group and you're watching, you can come back now. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Okay, so next up is my Christmas socks. So I am, this is just my vanilla sock pattern that I'm using with the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. And I am knitting these out of yarn I got at Yarn Nail. This is the Knitting Goddess. Ooh, look, it's got a little blurb there. Knitting Goddess. Um, four ply Brit sock in the Flower Power colorway. I know, but it looks Christmas to me. And I'm doing it on US 1.5 2.5 mil needles on my little 9 inch circulars, 23 centimeter zoom zoom needles because you zoom zoom zoom. So yeah, I cast on the sock this week. I've done the heel and I'm on the leg of the first sock already. I know, it's crazy. Um, it's been a quite a maddening week and I have just needed to have something in my hands that I could just knit and not have to think about. So, um, so my first Christmas sock is already almost done. Let's see. I tip, I'm going to make it longer like I did with the, my autumnal socks. So I need to go all the way to here. So like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, probably about 16 more stripes, but it's beautiful and it's so soft. You want to squish? So these are me, my fabulous Christmas socks. There has been, there was a, there's a debate going on right now about sock needles 
and I am definitely in the 9 inch 23 centimeter zoom zoom camp. That's me. Because you just zoom zoom round in circles. I can do everything except the toe on these and I also design on them when I do my sock designs. Okay, anyway. And then one last thing. Where is it? There. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I am doing the Neon Beast Shawl by Vera Valamaki on US 6's 4 mil needles. I am using four colorway, uh, four, no, three colorways. Two of them are Rainbow Heirloom Twinkle Light. This one is the Fluffy Bunny, and this one is almost spring. We're going to make a snowman. And this is, be careful because some of those are attached, are, is a Madeline Tosh Tosh Sock in the Pop Rocks color. Yeah, this one should be the bottom. <clears throat> Do you want to build a snowman? You're not singing your line. I don't know what it is. Yes, I want to build a snowman. That's not how the song goes. I think it is. No, anyway, okay. So that's the yarn. Oh. Hold on. Oh. This episode's going to be like, in which, holy crap, Cece doesn't have her stuff together. Whoa, watch, watch where you put those okay. needles. So, I started here with the gray. Du -du 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 -du, and it's all garter stitch, you see. And then, oh, you know what? I'm showing the back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, let's try this again. Wait, that's, that's, the, mm. <laughs> I'm just going to go dive into a sea of yarn. Okay, Mama, I can't hear you. Okay. Oh. Okay. okay. Neon bees. So you start with the gray. See, it's 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 garter stitch. It's fluffy bunny. It's fluffy bunny. And then you do short rows to add the almost spring in. And then you do this big old thing of almost spring that I thought was never going to end. I was like, come on, I just want to put the pink in. Am I there yet? I want to put the pink in. And then I got to put the pink in. Okay. Okay. Stop. 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 I don't know what happened. <laughs> And so I'm doing the pink short rows right now. And then I get to do a big section of pink. Watch where you put those needles. You're whacking me with them. <laughs> okay, what? They're nunchucks. No, they're not. Okay, so let me see if I can hold this oven. You can actually see the whole thing thus far. Oh my gosh. There you go. Oh wait, you're not you're stretching it. You gotta get the okay, there we go. So there it is so far. <laughs> oh my gosh, folks. I'm so sorry. Okay. It's, it's been one of those weeks. <clears throat> I don't think I don't have anything else on my needles. Thank goodness. I know, you know, maybe I could like pull a sweater out from behind the couch. Well, I did. I knit this too this week. I really want to cast on the um, mama vertebrae out of that pink right there above my head. You have stuff to finish first. I know I do. And I have baby sweaters to knit with that rainbow right there and with the gray and turquoise right there. So how is rainbow here? Is it Rainbow thing? Heirloom is, oh my gosh, amazing. Emily, you did an amazing job. This yarn is so squishy, and the color, I just love, can I come back this way for a second? Look how the gray, oops, I'm on the back again. <laughs> well, I guess it's the same, you know, anyway. Look how the, the gray, do you see how look, it, look how it, I don't know the words, it's, it's, Subtly, very yeah, it is subtly, just subtly changed, but subtly tonal. It subtly, <clears throat> that's it. Su subtly tonal. That what she said. And then the yellow is the well, it's kind of a yellow green. It is also subtly tonal. It's even more subtle. Yeah, there's little bits of it. Yeah, I love this. I'm just gonna wrap up in it. You and can't, cause it's not done yet. You have to finish knitting it first. No, I could just wear it with the needles. No, no. I think that would be just fine. No. Yes. No. I'll wear it. Like no. This. No. No. Okay. Well, that's all that's on our needles. That's all that's on our needles. I think we'll move on maybe to the next segment yeah. now. And now we're going to talk about our finished projects. Damaris, you have a finished project. Another one. Another, I know, that's like two, in two weeks. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> what, what's going on with you? It's amazing. It's a miracle. <laughs> what did you finish this week, my dear? I finished a pair of gloves. 
I know they don't look like gloves, but that's because you can't see the thumb hole. Okay, I'm gonna, hold on. Because I'm trying to make the green show. So there's, can you kind of see the green? Green. It's not as dark as it's showing up. Yeah. It's it's more it's more rich and deep. It's foresty. Yeah, it is foresty. It does not photograph well. No, and these are wet, so she's not gonna put them on because she's been blocking them. But there, there's just a little hole. I'm trying to see. There's the hole right there. And um, pattern and yarn and all that jazz. The pattern is Alice Resformers by Vicky Howell, mm -hmm. and I used US 8s, 5 millimeters, and the yarn is Debbie Bliss Rialto DK in the forest colorway. That's, that's the color being forest green. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think of this pattern? You knit this before several yeah. years ago, though. I discovered they f that they fit much tighter than ones I had knit a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, so your tension has <laughs> tightened up. Yeah. So maybe you should have done the next size up. Well, still, it was only four stitches difference. But four stitches can can give quite a lot, especially on five mil needles. I think they'll fit though. These are for my arch nemesis. She will be very excited. You'll be able to take them to her on Friday. All right. Did you finish anything else? No. Okay. Well, I finished only one thing. My weekly preemie hat that hasn't been soaked and blocked yet. Uh, this is from my free top-down preemie hat pattern on Ravelry. This is number 35 for the year. I know. This is on US 6-4 mil needles. This, you're done. Why are you still showing your stuff? I'm trying to hold them up so they don't like fold or something weird. Okay. I thought we were going to do a play. <laughs> Ah, okay. Finish okay. your hat. Um, so the kind of gold color is Brigantia. Oh my gosh, Brigantia is amazing. If you don't have Brigantia, you should get a hold of some because it's so amazing. It's what I did my sweater in. It's amazing. Okay, Brigantia Luxury Yarn Double Knit in the 8100 colorway. I know, they need names. And then the purple right here is uh, King Cole Merino Blend Erin in the purple colorway. You know, aptly named. So, yeah, 35 for the year. Next year, I'm going to make a goal to do one every single week. You have a problem. No, I like to knit for charity for I, the babies. I know. But still, it's so many. I know, but their little heads get cold. I know. So, but yeah. So, I didn't start till later in the year this year doing them. So, I won't have 52 this year. But I'm going to try to do one a week next year until I have 52. Because I have a whole big, huge bag of leftover yarn. So, all right. That's everything we finished. Let's move on to the next segment. Now it's time for my favorite part of our show. Yummies. What are yummies, Mare? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. And we have a whole stack full. Let's start with, do you want to start? Or do you want me to say it? Uh, you can say it if you like. <laughs> There, okay, so what's the guy's name? Billy Boyd. Who played Pippin mm -hmm. in Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings. <laughs> he is also a musician. Yeah. In what's the name of the band, do you remember? No, I don't. Okay, <laughs> anyway. But he wrote the final song for the final Hobbit movie, which we got tickets to. Yay! We're going... 16th or I think the 16th of December because I, I, it seems like the movie might be opening here in the UK before the US because we're awesome because we're awesome like that so anyway we got tickets to go um, but anyway back to the the yummies because that, that was yummy too you know um, anyway what's his name Billy Boyd Billy Boyd he wrote this song called the last goodbye and it's gonna be played over the ending credits oh my gosh yeah. tears just listening to it but then no. they made a music video that has classic scenes and behind the scenes. No, no, no. And I watched it and I cried and cried and cried. And then I watched another one this morning that you posted on Facebook. And I was like, oh my gosh, crying, crying, crying. So we'll be going. Uh -huh. We're going to see going. We will be going to see. We 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 will be, we will be going, going to, to see, see the Hobbit 
the Battle of the Five Armies in a few weeks. Uh, oh. And we will... Oh my gosh. I can't believe it's going to be over. No. <sighs> no. No. No, you're not supposed to show that yet. <laughs> no, sorry. sorry. You saw nothing. There's nothing behind the curtain. No, go, go no, on. Wait, I don't know how it goes, the Wizard of Oz. Pay know. no attention to the man behind the curtain. Okay. Anyway, next up. What are we talking about next? Oh, we're going to put it in the show notes so that you can go watch The Hobbit. And cry. Uh, yeah, and cry the song, the the last goodbye. Okay, you want to do the next one or, or me? <laughs> you, I'll, I'll talk about the other two. Okay, so Doctor Who Christmas special that's coming up in just about a month. They have released the title. It's going to be called Last Christmas. And there was like a, there was like a, the, what you call it? Synopsis. Yeah, that one. There was a, the synopsis about uh, the Doctor and Clara and... They were like, where are they? Like in the North Pole or something? Antarctica? Somewhere. Somewhere icy. And who's going to help them but Santa Claus? Yeah. To save Christmas. Right? I think. Okay. That's, so it's called Last Christmas. And I have a feeling we'll be saying goodbye to Clara. Okay. Okay. I don't know. So, um, now Damaris. I'm going to put something on the screen and we're going to talk about it. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> it's, it's, okay. Okay, so yesterday... The Sherlock cast and stuff went through the read-through of the special that's being filmed at the beginning of next year. Yeah, in January. Yeah. And observe this photograph. Observe. I got the one where they fixed it, where the lost shoulder is, is fixed. Yeah. Because the original one, his shoulder was missing. Yeah. And then it was like, people were like, oh, it's the mystery of the lost shoulder. But this is one fixed. But, OMG, do you see what's on the screen right now? OMG! What do you got to say, Mare? Awesome. I know. So, And then I was like, when I was looking for it to talk about it today, there's people who are like, oh, they're going to time travel. And I'm like, no, I don't think that's going to happen. No, it's probably a fancy dress party, that's a what dream, I'm thinking. or a hallucination. Yeah. I'm hoping for a, a, a party so that we can get all of them, all the characters <laughs> dressed up and that would be fabulous. I'm just imagining Lestrade in the Victorian place oh, where... that'd be fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> and what's what's her name that works at the... the... Molly. Yeah, Molly. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. I hope, I hope. <laughs> and, and, and... Mary. Mar yeah, Mary. I was saying Martin's wife. <laughs> not what? Yeah. Why, are they they're, not, they're not married. Mar Mar Martin's partner. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, oh my gosh. <gasps> we mm. can't wait, we can't wait! <laughs> okay, uh, and what else now? Next, you're up next. Because yeah. otherwise we're just going to squeal this whole episode. Yeah, but well, I'm squealing about this too. I know. <laughs> yeah, ABC released a new trailer, a new 30 second trailer for Agent Carter. Well, actually, January. there's two of them. Yeah, but they're both pretty much They're the close, same. yeah, but there's a few different scenes in, in them. But they're short, so they're, they'll be fast I'm so excited. I know, it's eight parts starting in January. Yeah, but can we have more than eight parts? Like, if, 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 if people like it, like, can we have, like, a full TV series? That'd be yes. freaking awesome. Yes, that, mean, that would mean we would have six full-length Marvel TV series going. I'm still, we're still waiting for the Netflix ones, but still. Six Marvel TV series. <sighs> so beautiful. I know, I know, I know, I know. So, yeah, we're excited about that. So, um, the second edition of the Doctor Who Companion Sock Club has started. And <laughs> this is a collaboration between me and Julia from Pandia's Jewels. So the companion for this first month of the second edition, second edition is Rose. Rose Tyler. This is the yarn. This is what's left over after I knit the socks. This is called Nice to Meet You, Rose. And... <laughs> here, That's when I accidentally showed you the two of yes, earlier. Here is the sock pattern. So, we've got just a, a normal... Um, what's this called? Sole of the foot just knit. The back of the sock is also just stuck in it because the cables on the front are so intense. So, if we start here at the toe... We have four roses, and then those... Roses, 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 no. our roses. No. And then we have this really interesting cable pattern. So, 
the nice and calm parts are for Rose's wonderful moments of life, but then we have these messes and these confusions in the cables, and that's for her struggles. And they kind of parallel because, you know, there was, you know, things were happening and Ken had to keep living and then they found her again and, yeah. And they're, they're matching. They're not different. They're just matching. But I love, love, love how it turned out. The yarn is fabulous. These are toe up. Um, yeah. They're so amazing. I love them. I love them. This cable pattern is just one of my favorites that I've done. Um, but I did stock in it on the back because the cables really draw it in. So I wanted to make sure that there was enough um, give, ease in it to wear them. Also, this club, last club we did um, badges and stitch marker every month of the club. Uh, but this time we just did one big extra and it came, um, mine came. So this is by Slip Stitch Studio and it's called a needle nook. So what you do is you have this amazing targuses. So there's three snaps here and you use it to put your circular or double point needles in to keep the stitches from falling off but also to keep your needles from poking through your project bag. Um, and I love this, she has this thing, this QR code, where if you, you know, take a picture of it with your mobile device, it takes you to a video of how to use this with circular needles. And then also it has right here on the back of this nice little zippered pocket that goes all the way on both sides that you can put like stitch markers or um, a crochet hook for picking up a drop stitch or extra needles or anything, whatever you want in. It's amazing. So this was the goodie um, for the second edition of the club. And I love it. It's very cute. I haven't used it yet because I wanted to be able to show y'all when it um, got to that. Um, right now it's exclusive to club members. And then on May the 18th, 2015, it'll be available to everyone. So thank you to the club members who purchased, and I hope you're enjoying the pattern. Okay, so next up is um, a pattern that was gifted to me by the sweet, sweet Rebecca, who is Evil Twin 2 on Ravelry, and she is the host of the Owl Knit With You podcast, which is lovely. You should watch it. Um, she just completed, and you, if you look in our FO thread for the artistic autumnal cal, it's in there, but I'm also going to put a picture on the screen. She just completed the three-in-one sweater pattern, which is by uh, Atelier Alpha. Is that how you would say that? <coughs> um, so this is Rebecca's version of it, and then in a minute I'm going to switch to the actual pattern picture that's on the pattern page. This is um, a really unique construction. It makes it look like you have three layers of, of a sweater on, when in actuality it's just one sweater cleverly worked to make it look like three. Um, it's done in sport weight. It's a layered Henley shirt worked from the bottom up in the round. It's seamless and in one piece. It's got a contiguous sleeve inset and extra long sleeves. Each layer of the body is shaped with short rows and then put on hold. The next layer is cast on and joined to the previous layer by knitting with three needles. Um, this has been in my queue for a while. And then I then uh, Rebecca finished hers and then she was so sweet and gifted it to me. I was having a really rough day yesterday. Actually, it's been a really rough week or so. And um, she gifted it to me. And that was a very sweet of her. So thank you, Rebecca. Love you. Oh, I can show what I made. Are you guys ready for this? Okay, so remember, um, it's been a while, probably last year, I made this rosewater hat, which is a tin can and it's pattern. And it's lovely. Um, I had been gifted the yarn. I can't remember what it is, what the yarn is. I think it's Mad Tosh. But the, it ended up, I didn't weigh it ahead of time. I know, silly me. Um, and I ended up about 15 grams short, so I had to severely modify, I don't know if you can see it underneath the, the thing, I had to severely modify the top of the hat. Well, pom-poms have been kind of the craze around here lately. 
uh, in our knitting group and such, and on the worldwide interwebs. Um, so this is a different yarn. It's not the same yarn as I used, but I had this, and I thought it was close enough. And so I didn't buy one of the pom-pom makers because I was like, I don't want to go out and buy it. I want it now. So I did the old cardboard method. So now let me see if I can put it on and show you what it looks like. So yay, I have a pom-pom. Can they see it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's so soft, isn't it? That yarn is yes. really soft. It's, it's so squishy. It's squishy. So now, ow, let go. Okay, you got to let go. <laughs> Because I'm connected to that. So, so it just made my um, my rose water hat just have little pink pom pom fun. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, what else? My yarn diet. It's been 31 days since I bought yarn. One month. One month. How do you feel? <sighs> I'm okay. I even was in the yarn shop the other day and was like, it's okay. I don't need to buy yarn today. I'm okay. So yeah, the golden scheme was one of my caveats. And so it'll be here in about a week. Three skeins of yarn, inspired by that fireworks picture. I will try to remember when I show y'all what when it comes in, and I get to show it to y'all to put the picture, have the picture to you to put on the screen so they can see the inspiration photo. So yay! But 31 days, I'm doing good. My yarn diet is until Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which is in March. Okay, anything else to manage before we go into our normal stuff? I don't think so. Okay. So next up, we're going to talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad, which is our photo a day challenge. So why don't you tell them about it? Um, you take a look at our prompt for the day, and you take a picture related to that prompt. I have like yarn, like randomly in my lap, and I don't know why. Okay, go ahead. And, and, and you post it anywhere you like. Uh, but we pick our favorite photos from Instagram, which is what we're going to show you now. Well, in, in a minute, we're going to talk for a second. Oh. So what was the theme for, no, what, what is the theme for the November's pictures? Thankfulness. Yes, being thankful, which is very important. Um, what is our theme for December? Because you know what? We have the December list up. Winter. Winter and Christmas and all that jazz. So the winter list is up. We'll put it on the screen here in a minute. Uh, and it's in the show notes as well, so you should participate. So, like you said now, we're going to show them what? Two photos from us that we liked, mm -hmm. and five photos from other people that we liked. So here come the photos. So those were our favorite photos this week. Great job, y'all. You're amazing as always. Cinnamon rolls. Oh yeah, that one picture. <gasps> that was amazing. <laughs> okay, so um, keep taking your photos and posting them. All right, Damaris, do you want to talk about um, upcoming events we're going to be attending? I'm sure every Monday night we can, we attend one of our local knitting clubs, the Town Rouse Knitting Club. Yes. And so if you're ever in Edinburgh or you live in Edinburgh, you should come because it's a lot of fun. We meet at a pub and it's amazing. All right, then we have the Edinburgh Yarn Festival coming up on March 14th and 15th, 2015. Um, we will be there. I'll be vending with Sam of Knit Run Dig bags. It's fun. We'll be in the Podcaster Lounge at some point. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. And then... If you're not interested in retreat stuff, you can fast forward to the TV because and books because the segment part right here is going to be all about the retreat. Okay. Here we go. So, the Geeky Puffin Knitpalooza is next year, 2015, at the end of October, beginning of November. We announced this week our classes and teachers, which are Claire Devine, who is um, from Yarn and Pointy Sticks. She's based here in Edinburgh. She is going to be teaching... Um, intro to Magic Loop class and a Sock Heels Master class. And then we have Kirsten Bedigan, who is also from here in 
uh, I almost said Abilene. We haven't lived in Abilene over a year. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. That's where we live. Um, her website is Af Afaya. Is that how you pronounce it? I think so. Um, we'll put, we have links to all this in the show notes. She is going to be teaching Drop Spindling for Beginners and an Introduction to Fair Isle class. And then our final teacher is Suzanne Strachan. She is from the London area, and she does, uh, her website is Suzanne Strachan Designs, and she will be teaching for us a short rows class and a finishing techniques class. Um, everybody gets one class with their retreat fee, and then if there's space in classes, if you're interested in taking more as, as space allows, uh, there'll be a little extra fee for that. We also announced this week the prices for the retreat. So there are four options. First option is a non-residential pass. You're going to get everything that all the, the on-site ret uh, retreat attendees receive except for a bed to sleep in. That cost is going to be £215 per attendee. And then the three on-site options, we have a family room, we only have one of these, and it's going to be a shared room for three people, and it will be £280 per person. And then we have um, twin rooms, which have two single beds in them, so you'd be sharing a room with someone. And those are going to be 305 per person. And then we have a few single rooms, um, which so you'll have a private room, and that's going to be 320 pounds per person. Um, startups are going to start on Monday, December 1st. Sign-ups are going to start. What did I say? Startups are going to start. Oh, Sign-ups are going to start. So sorry. I'm glad I have you. What would I do without you? I don't know. Say startups. I would. And other random things that I don't pronounce correctly. And lots of other things. Because you're awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're talking about sign-ups. Sign-ups. <laughs> They're going to start Monday, December the 1st at 3 p.m. our time, which is GMT, which will be 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the U.S., 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So hopefully, if you're not in one of those five time zones, that'll help you be able to figure it out anyway. Um, and the sign-ups will be on our website, geekypuffinknitpalooza.blogspot.co.uk. Uh, all this is in the show notes. Uh, what are you going to receive for your retreat fee? You are going to receive... Uh, all meals starting with Thursday dinner and running through Sunday breakfast. All the meals are going to be on site. If you have any dietary issues, um, there's going to, there's a spot on the application form to let us know because they can accommodate that as long as we know in advance. You also will receive your lodging at the retreat center here in Edinburgh unless you're getting a non-residential pass. Obviously, then you won't have a place to sleep. Um, you'll also be receiving a goodie bag made by Sam. From Knit Run Dig Bags. She does fabulous bags. This is my Christmas bag that she did for me. Isn't it fabulous? So she's going to be making a special bag. You'll have your choice of three fabrics, which you won't know. We're just going to give you themes. So you can have a geeky themed bag, a puffin themed bag, or an artistic themed bag. Do you want to say anything more about the artistic? It's, it's in Art. It's inspired by a painting. Art. Or you can tell us, I want to be surprised and we'll pick one for you. I am sure there's going to be somebody at the retreat if you end up not liking the, the fabric you got that might be willing to switch with you. So, you'll get a goodie bag. Um, you will get... Oh, the bag is going to be filled with all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to tell you all of it, but we have so many amazing things going in this goodie bag. You will be getting a Notions pouch, also sewn by Sam. You will get, be getting a skein of yarn in an exclusive colorway dyed by Jess of Ginger Twist Studio, which is our LYS here in Edinburgh. You're going to have your choice of either a geeky-themed colorway or a puffin-themed co colorway, um, or you can be surprised. You can tell us to surprise you. So, And like, just like the bags, I'm sure somebody will be willing to switch with you. Um, what else? You'll get one class out of those six classes we just talked about. You'll get an exclusive set of stitch markers made by Zena of the Little Yellow Uke podcast. You will get a three-shop yarn crawl, uh, including transportation to those three yarn shops. You'll be able to participate in the vendor market, where we will have, be having vendors come on-site to the retreat center and selling their things. We uh, haven't started vendor signups yet, but hopefully by the end of the week we'll have those started. We have a few people who have expressed interest, and we're very excited about that. 
uh, hopefully things will work out. If you are interested in vending, send us an email um, or watch for us to post the link in the next few days, hopefully. Um, what else? Loads of door prizes and goodies. We have a list of lots of amazing people that are going to be helping us with that. Um, you will be getting three patterns. You will be getting a sock pattern designed by me. Um, I'm going to be designing it with a geeky themed colorway. Um, Sam is going to design a shawl pattern using the puffin colorway. And then Kirsten, who is one of our teachers, is going to be doing a Fair Isle mitten pattern with puffins on it. And it's amazing what I've seen so far. So you'll be getting those three patterns for three for free. Three patterns for free. They will go out, they'll be public after the retreat, but you'll get first dibs on them. We're going to have a try, show, tell, and swap event. We are going to have a podcaster panel and Q&A session. We're going to have a designer panel and Q&A session. And much, much more that I have not told you about. It's going to be amazing. It seems like from what we heard, have heard, the spots are going to sell out pretty fast. Because we can only host, um, I believe it's 53 people total. And that includes the six teachers. So we have about 47 spots available. So if you are interested in participating, you need to be on that application at 3 p.m. on um, our time on Monday, December the 1st. There will be a 100 pound non-refundable deposit that will be due by December 31st of this year. You won't pay it when you uh, do the attendee um, registration form. You um, will we'll invoice you because we need to make sure that we have you in the right spot and that we have enough spots and such. Uh, and then the other two payments will be, I wanna make sure and give you the right information and I don't know where it is. Hold on just a second. Uh, I don't have it here. I don't have the exact date. The rest of your fee will be divided in half. I believe the deadlines are gonna be the end of March for the first half and the end of June for the second half. I will clarify that and make sure we have that on the website. But um, it'll be half and half. So if you're a non-resident pass, you would pay your 100 pound deposit by the end of December, and then the other 115 pounds would be divided in half, half due at the end of March, half due at the end of June. And it'll be the same for the residential as well, just divided in half. Um, your, your deposit is non-refundable. If something happens and you're not able to attend the retreat, if we are able to fill your spot with someone else, because we will do a waiting list if we have more people interested, um, as long as we can fill your spot, we will refund your money other than the deposit. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So for the, re for the registration form, what you need to have ready to put in, of course, your contact information, your name, address, phone number, email, social media. Um, think about dietary issues or um, accessibility issues because there's a, a question about that. Think about what class you want to take and what other ones you might be interested in if that one fills up. Um, what preference you want for your bag, geeky, puffin, or artistic, or will surprise you for your yarn, geeky, or puffin, or will surprise you. Your emergency contact, uh, the name, relationship, and uh, phone number for us to contact them in case of an emergency. I think those are the main things. There might be something else. It's not coming to my mind, though. So those are the main things. Have that information ready and uh, ready to go when you sign up on Monday. And we're very excited. Okay, that was really long and I didn't intend for that to be this long. Let's move on to the next segment. we're reading and what TV we're watching. So what are you reading there? The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. How's it going? Uh, <laughs> How far are you? Uh, late 
15 years something, early 60s. Okay, and how, when do you have to have it done by? Is it before Christmas? Uh, probably, but I will get it done before then because I'm doing school for the next three days. Yes. <laughs> um, and it would be fun to read something just because you want to over Christmas break. Yes. Because you're having two weeks off? Mm-hmm. So that would be really cool. Um, I'm so sorry you're not enjoying it. It'll be over soon. <sighs> Why? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm still reading my same nonfiction book, uh, The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. The full title is in the show notes. And I'm also still rereading the Outlander series, but this time I'm reading um, it with all the novellas and extra novels that happen in the same world, but don't necessarily have the main characters. So I finished this week Lord John and the... Thank you. And at the succubus. Succubus. Yeah, I thought I thought I was both of them. No. No. I read, I finished that one, and now I'm reading Lord John and the Brotherhood of the Blade. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk TV. You want to start? Sure. Um, we're rewatching season nine of Stargate SG One mm-hmm. and season two of Stargate Atlantis. Yay, Vala! Vala! <laughs> I really like Vala. She's so much fun. She is. We're missing Sam, though, because she hasn't been in a few yeah. episodes. And Teal, why are you there? You said you were leaving. Why, why are you there? So I'm ready for Sam to come back. She'll be back, right? Yeah. Okay. But she's she's in the main cast. I know. She'll be back. And then she'll be in Stargate <laughs> Atlantis, too, for a while. Okay, and then we're re-watching season six of Gilmore Girls. Oh, Rory, Rory, Rory. Although the party she did was fabulous, the one she hosted. Now I kind of I kind of want to do a Vicky Carter cosplay because I know it. it's amazing. Forties like, aesthetic is so pretty. I love the hair with the the vin- the vintage look the with the rolled and oh, it was amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, and then the, the end had another fire. That was sad. Salads. Yes, they're having lots and lots of salads. Pizza and pizza. No, pizza. Polenka. Oh, pizza! Yes, Paul Anka is kind of personality. <laughs> That's their dog. Um, okay, and then we're also watching Lois and Clark: The New Adventures of Superman. We're rewatching season three. Damaris is re- always watching it for the first uh, time, okay. and now we are to the Lois eating frogs portion of our show. No, because she's a clone. No, and now she wants to kill the real Lois, and the real Lois. Is amnesia and thinks she's in love with Lex Luthor. <sighs> can we just get past this? Who wrote this show? I don't know. But can we just get past this part <laughs> so that they can really get married and be happy together? Who Imagine wrote me this and you show? and you and me. Okay. Mom, no matter we, how they toss gotta, the dice. We gotta. It had to be. We gotta the talk about for more me is you shows. Hey, look what's and next. For me. It's a so happy. To, oh. Yeah. Okay. I should have thought that through. Oh. We're at a cliffhanger. So we've watched. My glasses are falling off. We've watched season, is it five? Yeah, five up to the most recent episode and it's to be continued. And so this guy, he wanted to commit suicide because it was awful and he had been accused of something that he didn't do. And so he's going to commit suicide because he was very upset and he's on the edge of the bridge. And then... And then, and then Rizzoli goes out there to try to save him, and they're gonna come back over the bridge, and it, he stumbles, and he falls in the water, and she goes in after him, and that's the end, and Mara's screaming, Jane! Okay. And now we have to wait till February to find out if Jane survives. Well, of course she does. She's one of the main characters. The show could just become Isles. No. That would be very sad. It's not oh, fun. No, oh, no, oh, no. Okay. okay. Oh, oh. And I didn't mention Everwood because I didn't get a chance to watch any this week. I've had a massive um, work project that has just been oh, part of my frustration this week. So, next up is NCIS 12.8 Simper Fortis. <coughs> is that how you say it? Do you remember what it stands for? I mean, what it means? Always something faithful or truthful or something okay. like that. Anyway, I think. <laughs> so this one, we dealt with Abby's relationship rules and the two-month rule. But I think the new guy is going to make it. 
but it was really interesting to have McGee and Abby talking about it. His, in, his name is Bert. Yeah. Oh, like, that's right. Like her hippo. Like her hippo. Her farting hippo. <laughs> so funny um yeah the next one was actually on last night 12.9 grounded and apparently we're gonna meet bishop's husband I th oh. whoa yeah you, i thought i thought he was gonna be like colombo's wife on colombo you oh, he always mentions her but you never, never see her yeah so that'll <laughs> be fun and then we're watching ncis new new orleans they still haven't fixed their thing that i hate season one it's they're pretty not, good. It doesn't need to be fixed. It's just the thing. Apparently, <laughs> I don't know if it's in the episode that was on last night or if it's in an upcoming episode, there's going to be Quantum Leap Reunion What on the show. Wait, you mean the the guy? The guy? I, I think so. I, I don't know. I can't remember his name. What's I, his name? I don't know, but I can see his face. So can I. Why is he in my head? <laughs> yeah, anyway. It's John something, isn't it? I don't know. I don't remember. It's been too long since I've watched it. Um, anyway, okay, let's move on. Uh, Europe. Yes, I am. Europe. Yep. <laughs> okay, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes. What was uh, the episode? 2.8, The Things We Bury. Grant, no. Grant, why? Grant, no. I know. No. He, that, that boy needs some help. He does. He really, really does. What else do you have to say about the show? Peggy Carter, founder, oh. happens to be British, held this in her hand. Did you hear that, May? In her hand. <laughs> she, she touched this. Yes. She, she... Yes. What's the next episode? <laughs> um, 2.9, Ye Who Enter Here. But it's not on until next week. Yeah, and the name of episode 10 is apparently, What Should They Become? And that was the tagline for all of their season 2 promo stuff. What will they become? Like, what will, like, they show a picture of Sky? what will she become? And they did that for all of the characters. Oh, so this is intriguing. <laughs> but that's the winter finale, isn't it? I think probably so. Oh my. There might, yeah, I bet 9 and 10, and then I bet there's the winter finale. Um, then we have Person of Interest Season 4. I'm trying to think if there's anything... I don't recall anything just life-shattering in that one. <laughs> and then we have Criminal Minds Season 10. We always forget what happens. I know. Things happen. Because we watch it the day after we record the podcast and then it's a whole week till we record again. Uh, we should things make, happen. We there's... should make notes on there and we're so bad about that. Yeah, Sorry. It's not it's not a really big show. Yeah, it's not it? it's one not one of our top yeah. like top six or so. Okay. Things happened. Murders were solved. Yes. Crime was committed, not yeah. in that order. No. Um so what's up next on the list, Mayor? Um Elementary. Yay. Three point four Bella. This this episode was kind of bizarre. Yes, it was very bizarre. It, but it, I liked it. I liked it. I think I need to watch <laughs> it again. Yeah, and the way they ended it, it's like... I know, I was like, wait, they can't end it that way. I was like, are we sure that we saw the whole episode? Because it was about this, um... Artificial intelligence. Yes. But there was this creepy doll. They they wired it through the doll, so it was, you weren't just talking to a monitor. I know, that doll was so creepy, though. It was, it was just a regular baby doll. It was creepy with that voice coming out of it. Do you have anything else you want to say? What's the next episode? It's the Joan Watson show. Yep. What's the next uh, episode? Uh, 3.5, Rip Off. Is that this week or next week? It's this week. They, it is. They're airing it on Thanksgiving. Oh, that's right. We were talking about that, that they were airing it on Thanksgiving. Why? I'm not sure, like, but... Wouldn't I'm, football be on? Maybe they're using it as a competition <laughs> with football on, the other on another channel? CBS airs football. But they don't air all the football. But they air some football. Yeah, but they might have like an afternoon game. Anyway, we're not TV guide listings. <laughs> Thank you very much. And then the um, then Bones, watching season 10 as it airs. Oh my gosh, I was crying my eyes out. She was? I really, really was. Because Daisy and Sweet's baby was born. 
Booth is holding Seely Lance and telling him all about his family, you know, them all that are working together. And his dad, and there were so, so many tears, tears, lots and lots of tears. I cried. Seely Lance is what they did. So precious. That they did the writing for that was amazing. Amazing. And then season eight of Big Bang Theory. I don't remember what happened. Yeah. It was that exciting. I don't remember. And then season five of Haven. I think. I, I, yeah. Are you ready? You're ready. I'm ready for. Am I ready for what? To get rid of it. To get rid of it? But I, I have to know what happens. Ah, uh, no, you don't. I have to know. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. But I think this is going to be the last season for it because they've moved it into such a bad time slot because it's not doing well. Because they are like dragging things out. I'm like, just, just, just deal with it. You want to talk about Atlantis? Yeah. We're right. Right. <laughs> okay. okay. We're watching series two of BBC's Atlantis. And you had to explain to me all over again because I was so confused. Yeah. Very, very confused. So many of their names sound the same. No, they don't. They do. They no, they don't. They, they no, confuse me. They don't. There's and and I don't remember what their names really are, but they Pacify is the only person whose name I can think starts with a P. No, there's another one. You told me about it. I don't know. Poseidon, maybe. The names are so confusing. <laughs> They're why Greek. Can't, why can't we just go, dude A, dude B, dude C, lady E, lady F, lady G, and then I'd be fine. Yeah, that because that is less confusing and it totally is. Greek. It is. It is. What do you want to say about Atlantis? Oh, wait, Pythagoras. <laughs> How can I forget about Pythagoras? I told you their names sounded as the same. Pacify and Pythagoras yes. do not sound similar. They do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. The first two syllables are the same. Pi and pa. They're very close. They can be confusing yes, to an adult brain. To an adult brain? Adult. Adult. Confused. <laughs> adult. I thought you said adult. <sighs> but Pythagoras... I'm so sorry. If you are still watching this an hour later, this this episode is insane. I don't even but know. Pythagoras and Pacify do not sound the same. They do to my brain. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Uh, they don't. What else do you want to say about Atlantis? I like it. Okay, good. And then Castle 7.8 Kill Switch. Mm-hmm. Esposito. Do you think finally that Esposito and Lainey will like really, really be together? I mean, I know they're dating. Do you think they'll get married now? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone on the team is married. I know. Wouldn't that be amazing? <gasps> because as he was like about to grab the detonator and he's like, Lainey. Okay. <laughs> um... Next episode is 7.9, Last Action Hero, on December the 1st. And then NCIS LA, we're watching season 6. It was a good episode that we watched last night uh, with them trying to find the mole. And then we watched... The Hobbit, the first one. An Unexpected Journey. So we wanted to rewatch before we see the movie in a few weeks. Yeah. Yep. That's all the TV. That's all the TV. Let's move on to the next segment. Mm -hmm. to talk about our artistic autumnal cal. Yes. So this is coming to an end. It ends on Sunday. So if you have a project you want to enter, you need to get it posted by Sunday because I'm going to close the thread Monday morning, December 1st when I get up. So any project that you have knit, crocheted, weaved, or spun between September the 1st, it couldn't have started before then, and ending, it has to be finished by November 30th, you have to convince us that it's related to autumn. Color, pattern, purpose, etc. If you can't think of one, you craft it in the autumn. That's fine. We're totally good with that. We have four prizes. Three of them are Ravelry pattern downloads donated by Eileen Twisting Pearls, Eileen Wisconsin Knitter, and Liz Ellie Jellybean. And then we'll also have something from our Bagel prizes. Um, we had a bunch of people finish this week, so why don't you give them shout outs right quick? Angie's Hip, Bindi J, Ritter the Knitter, Celeste times 
four, 14. Yes. How did she finish 14? I And I said in it, yes, 14. Four, how, I think what she did is she had done a lot of them, like starting from September 1st, and just had a chance to sit down and enter them. So, 14. Great job. That's amazing. Okay, CJ William times two, Denise Chang, Eleanor Gamgee times two, Ellie Jellybean times two, Evil Twin two, Homespun, I Love My iPad, Knit Princess 83, KPMCQS, mm -hmm. Larger Print Knit, is that, no, large, The Large Print Knit. Large Print Knit. Yes. Linsica? I think like Jessica, Linsica. Linsica. Little Panda 518, Elle McCall. Mar Maria Wilhelmina times eight. Yes, eight. What? Mrs. Neely Johns times three. Phoenix Fire. Poke. Wait, what? No. P O K D E J. I don't know. R S Island. Mm -hmm. Stumpy O One and Tulip One O Two Nine O Three. Yay! Great oh. job, y'all. That was a lot. So get your projects entered, and we will draw for prizes next week. Now we are going to talk about our next cow that will be starting on December 1st. That's Monday. That's also when sign-ups start for the retreat. Lots going on. Okay, so this next cow is the Winter Wonderland cow slash charity cow. So it's going to run similarly to our other um, seasonal cows where you can knit, crochet, weave, or spin a project and convince us it's related to winter. Um, the dates for this cal are going to, it's going to start December 1st, so you can't start a project before then. It has to be December 1st or later, and you have to f have it finished by the 28th of February. Um, so that's the Winter Wonderland aspect of it. The charity aspect of it is, if you craft something between those dates and donate it to a charity, you can enter your project twice in the, um, FO thread. So I'm going to put, I'll put the information that we need, but... You're going to have to post a picture, and then we want to know where you're donating it. And you'll just post the same thing twice. I know it's going to give you that message. You've already posted th this before. It's okay. Nobody else is, see, is going to see that but you. It says you need to have group moderator per permission to post it more than once. This is your permission. Give them permission. Permission. Okay, permission granted. So you're going to post that <clears throat> twice because you're getting two entries for doing a charity item. Now... We are totally fine for you donating it to some some place in your area. That is totally fine. If you don't have a place you want to donate to, if you would like to send it to us, we are going to be doing a collection for Knit for Peace. And we're going to put their website link in the show notes. They match knitters with good causes. They have a distribution service that delivers hand knit or crocheted, etc. items to organizations that need them. So they accept anything from like preemie hats, baby hats, baby sweaters, baby socks, mittens, adult hats, adult sweaters, adult scarves, adult socks, kids stuff, anything that you can do that somebody could wear, they will accept. Um, so if you want to send them to us, we will do a big donation and we will do it all, we will give it to them after the February 28th deadline um, for the Cal ends. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, prizes, we're not 100% sure yet. We know we'll be doing something. If you would like to donate a prize, that would be amazing. Either send me a uh, PM on Ravelry to Java Pearl or send us an email to geekygirlsknit at gmail.com and we would love to uh, mention you every week on the podcast and show what you're going to be donating. Um, what's the hashtag? GGK WWK Geeky Girls Knit Winter Wonderland Cow. That's the hashtag. I think that's everything. We'll open the threads December 1st. I may open them the day before, but starting December 1st is when you can start on your projects. I think that's it. Alright, let's move on to the next segment. Sorry, my brain lost the words again. The next segment. Here we go.
And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us a question and we answer it. All right, Damaris, well, who asked us this week's question and what's the question? SC Beach Chick, who mm -hmm. is Bianca from California, asks, if you could have two, any two superpowers, what would they be and why? So apparently this is a question that she and her son ask new friends. And it's a great question. I really like it. So do you want to start, Damaris? What's... No, you. you oh, to... I'm going to start? Okay. Yeah. So I knew instantly what one of mine was going to be. It is teleportation. Yeah. I, I, I talk about this at least a handful of times a week and, and gripe at Damaris that she has not created a <coughs> transporter for us yet. I mean, come on, get with it. Build us a transporter. Yeah. I want to be able to instantly go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my first one. Wait, so teleportation like Azazel or teleportation like Blink? Azazel, he goes, he just goes poof. But Blink can make portals. Well, if I can make... They're called Blink Waves. If I make Blink Wave portals, I can take people with me. But Azazel can take people with him too. He's but doesn't he's, he, gotta, he's gotta hold on to him. Yes, but doesn't he have the issue of not if he doesn't know where he's gonna be landing, he could end up in a wall? Oh yeah, Nightcrawler has that too because Azazel is his dad. <laughs> so yeah. I think I would go with the what were they called? Blink waves. Blink waves. I would go with that one. Or portals. <laughs> portals. Yeah. Now you're thinking with portals. Um, the second one I have trouble deciding. I actually went to, did a Google search and said superhero powers and found an alphabetical list of superhero powers. You can't have both of them. I know, but so I'm debating between two. Either enhanced memory, because y'all have seen today how bad my memory is. That would be wonderful if I had enhanced memory. Or enhanced healing factor. I think I'm leaning towards the enhanced memory, even though I really like both of those options. So let's get right on that and give me those um, superpowers, Damaris. You got it. All right. So what are your superpowers going to be? Okay. <laughs> well, one of them was telepathy. <laughs> oh, dear. Are you going to communicate with my brain? My enhanced memory? <laughs> <laughs> the other one that was telekinesis. Like Being able to move things with your mind? Yeah. Like Jean Grey, except less Phoenixy. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Those are good ones. Those are good ones. Yeah, I'm, ba I'm, ba I'm basically Jean Grey. So any reason why you want those other than you just like Jean Grey? Nah. No. Okay. So thank you so much to SC Beach Chick for the question for this week. It was a great one. Um, if you would like to tell us what you would want your two superhero powers to be and why... Post that this week in the episode thread. That would be fun to read about what your superhero powers would be. Okay, Damaris, if somebody has a question for us, what should they do? Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. And then we'll get around to answering it. We'll answer pretty much anything. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, we're bringing this extremely long episode to a close. <sighs> we know we said we were going to review Pom -pom Qu the new Pom Pom Quarterly, which is right here. Hold on, let me grab it. The new Pom Pom Quarterly. It smells so nice. It does. In this week's episode, but it, this week's episode has run really long, and so we are going to postpone it till next week. We hope that we don't... I mean, I don't want to make anybody sad, but... It would make the episode about an hour and a half long, and we're already long enough, I think. So we will review this next week. We promise. Pinky swear. All right, other announcements. Toil and Trouble Yarns, who's our friend Anna, is hosting a fiber retreat in May in New Hampshire. If you're interested, link in the show notes. I'm sponsoring the retreat. You should go. It sounds amazing. Outlander Cal is ongoing. Um... All the details are in the show notes, and we will pick that up and talk more about it again uh, closer to when the show comes back after the hiatus. Um, we're Amazon affiliates. That helps support this podcast. Um, it helps us pay for badges and shipping and prizes and all that jazz. So um, I believe it only will work for U.S. people, though. So there's links in the show notes. If you click on them and then shop on Amazon, Amazon gives us a little bit back, which helps. So thank you to those of you who are doing that. 
Any other announcements? No. All right, Damaris, tell them where to find us online because we had tons <laughs> of links this week and you're going to want to be able to find them. You can find us at geekygirlsknit.blogspot.com. There, there are links to everywhere else we're online. YouTube, iTunes, Broadway, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Yes. So, tomorrow is Thanksgiving in U.S. Well, actually, if you're watching this, Thanksgiving is today in the U.S. Unless you're or watching it on Thursday. Unless then you're... it was a previous day. No, if US. you're watching it on Thursday, it's... Thanksgiving. If you're watching no, it on Friday. Unless you're not watching it oh. on Thursday. Then it was a previous day in the U.S. Depending on when you're watching this. <laughs> a previous day in the U.S. Anyway, what I wanted to say is even if you're not in the U.S., if your country doesn't have Thanksgiving or if it's Thanksgiving's on another date, you can still be thankful. So there is so much going on in the world right now that is sad and angry making and frustrating and makes life hard to deal with and I've faced a lot of that this week it's been a really rough week with lots of things going on behind the scenes I just want to encourage you to take a minute think of what you're thankful for and if it's a person tell them how thankful you are for them because you don't know what the next day can bring so happy Thanksgiving we love you guys a lot. If it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't do this. And be grateful for what you have. Because not everybody is as blessed as we all are. With that, we'll say happy knitting. And we'll talk to you next week.